Hello friends, this video on breathing and exchange of gases part 4 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we will talk about the human respiratory system. Now when you talk about the human respiratory system, there are a quite a few organs which all together form this respiratory system in human beings. So let us quickly look at the different uh, parts of the respiratory system. So the respiratory system consists of nostrils. So here you have your nostrils. The nasal cavity, like how you have oral cavity, like inside your mouth you can feel an open space that is oral cavity. Similarly, inside your nose, you can actually feel, you can actually feel some open space like structure. So that is the nasal cavity. Then you have pharynx, so this was your nasal cavity, this portion is nasal cavity, this is your nose or nostril, whatever you call it. From the nasal cavity, you can feel this portion which is pharynx. You remember while we talked about pharynx, we talked about three portions of pharynx, nasopharynx, oropharynx and laryngopharynx. So la nasopharynx is the that portion of pharynx which lies just behind the nasal cavity, so this portion is nasopharynx. Now, the part of pharynx which lies near the oral cavity that is oropharynx and the below portion of the pharynx is laryngopharynx. So, here nasal first is nostril, then nasal cavity and then pharynx or nasopharynx whatever you call it. Next is trachea. Trachea is this tube like structure which you see here. So, this is trachea. You see this tube like structure? Right. Then you have the lungs. So, these are the two lungs. So lungs occur in pairs. There is a right lung and a left lung. You have bronchi, bronchioles and alveoli. Now this trachea which you see here, this trachea will enter both the lungs and they will branch off into thinner branches. So these branches are called bronchi. Then bronchi further divides into thinner branches called bronchioles. And the end of the bronchioles have small structures called alveoli. So all these structures together constitute the respiratory system and when we breathe in, so the air actually reaches the alveoli through this path. Like first it reaches the nostrils, then it goes to nasal cavity, then pharynx, then trachea, then to bronchi, bronchioles and finally the alveoli. And alveoli is the place where actual exchange of gases take place. That means this is the place where oxygen which is taken in is sent to the blood and carbon dioxide which has which was a byproduct of cellular respiration comes from the blood to the alveoli so once the carbon dioxide reaches the alveoli alveoli is the part of lung so once it reaches the alveoli means it reached the lungs and then from alveoli it again follows the same path to be thrown out of the body through the nostrils so now we will discuss about each of these parts in detail so let us start our discussion with nostrils and nasal cavity. So let us look at nostrils and nasal cavity. So nostrils, they are the openings through which air is taken in. So if you look at your nose, you actually see two openings. So they are the nostrils. So there are fine hairs present there which filters the air which we take in. So you can actually observe the small hairs which are present in the nostrils. So they are used to filter like whichever air we are taking in, whatever impurities or dirt is there, it actually tries to stop them. So in a way it is filtering the air which is being taken in. The next is nasal cavity. The way a mouth opens into oral cavity in a very similar way nostrils open into the nasal cavity. So here, this is a cavity where the air reaches through the nostrils. Now, if you see here, you might uh, see here that this is your mouth oral cavity and this is your nasal cavity. So the mouth cavity and the nasal cavity, they are separated by a bony plate. So here you look at this. This portion is a bony plate which separates the nasal cavity from the oral cavity. So again here in the nasal cavity, there is a central septum which separates the right and left air passages dividing the two nostrils. So this is how the two nostrils look like. These are the two holes which you see in your nose. Now they are separated by a wall. This is known as the central septum. 
this wall in between which you can feel it in your nose so that is the central septum the nasal passages are lined with ciliated epithelium and mucus now why mucus and ciliated epithelium now ciliated epithelium is the one which is lined with cilia and cilia are again small hair like structures so they also serve the same purpose they help to block the dirt particles or microorganisms or any other germ and thus they will prevent such foreign particles to reach the lungs so that is how it will protect the uh, respiratory system from any foreign particles what about the mucus mucus is a slimy substance it will actually help to moisten the air so it will make the air more moist and it also helps the air to move down it is a slimy substance as i said so mucus and ciliated epithelium together help in filtering the air so the nostrils and nasal cavity throughout is lined by small hair like structures either in the form of cilia or otherwise which help in filtering the air because it is very very important that we keep the respiratory system very well protected because if uh, some foreign particles get inside the respiratory system so it can actually spoil the entire functioning of the body so what happens is air enters through the nostrils it they get warmed and moistened at the nasal cavity so nostrils just act as the entrance and the nasal cavity actually help to filter the air to warm and moisten it with the help of mucus and the ciliated epithelium now after the nasal cavity comes the pharynx so pharynx is the common passage for food and air so as you see here this part is pharynx now even in this part it is divided into three parts the part just behind the nasal cavity is nasopharynx the that portion of pharynx which is just behind the oral cavity that is called oropharynx and the portion of pharynx which is near the larynx is known as the laryngopharynx and so all these three together is termed as pharynx so pharynx is the common passage for food and air so whatever we eat goes into the oral cavity and whatever air we breathe goes into the nasal cavity but both of them open into the pharynx but again from pharynx they go downward and then again they get divided into two tubes air gets into the windpipe that is the trachea and food gets into the esophagus that is the food pipe so if you see here this brown colored pipe tube like structure that is esophagus which opens into stomach so that basically takes you to the digestive system whereas this trachea which you see here this takes you to the lungs that is this takes the air to the respiratory system now enough care should be taken that food should not get into the windpipe because wind pipe cannot manage food and once food enters into the wind pipe it can actually cause choking and it can lead to death so now food goes to the esophagus and air goes into the trachea so trachea lies in front of esophagus as you can see in this picture trachea uh, esophagus is just behind the trachea now the question is as i said that food should not enter into the trachea so who prevents uh, that who prevents food from entering into trachea so for that we have a cartilaginous structure known as epiglottis so here if you see here you have a brown colored structure like this here right so this structure is nothing but it is like a flap kind of a structure which remains closed all the time and it opens only when air has to pass through the trachea so this covering actually protects food from entering into the trachea so it is a small cartilaginous flap of skin so it is a very small flap so it prevents food from entering the respiratory tract now if by any chance food enters into the respiratory tract you would have often seen right that while uh, eating if you are eating very hastily or you are eating very fast or something sometimes food gets stuck in your throat somewhere near your throat and you suddenly start to cough so even that happens when a minute particle tries to get inside your trachea and you suddenly start to feel suffocation so when you actually start coughing that coughing actually brings out that food material outside and as a result your respiratory tract is uh, like not damaged but in case the food gets into the respiratory tract it can lead to death so epiglottis perform a very vital function without which 
I mean, there will be a lot of confusion. The food and the air, they will not know which way to go. Now, since both food uh, and air, both of them have a common passage, that is the pharynx, that is why you would have often seen that if somebody closes your, I mean, if, if you try to press your nostrils really hard such that the two nostril openings get closed, what happens? After a few seconds, you feel like suffocating. So what do you do? You start breathing by your mouth. So you open your mouth and take in air. So that is possible because when you take in air, even by your mouth, the air actually goes into the pharynx. But why do we prefer not to breathe by, breathe by our mouth? That is because the nasal cavity and the nostrils they have uh, cilia and small hairs as well as a mucus which actually uh, helps in filtering the air so all those things are missing in our oral cavity because oral cavity has got all the salivary enzymes and all those stuff which help in digestion but they have nothing which can actually filter the air which you take in that is why it is always advisable to breathe through your nose and not through your mouth Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.